Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again today with special guest, Mrs. Oracle. Yes, you've heard her, the woman, the myth, the legend. She's here with us today to show off how easy it is to make a live USB under MX Linux. So, hello, thank you, welcome. Thanks for having me. All right, well, there you go. Guys, now you know what she sounds like. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we have a PNY 32 gigabyte USB 3 device. It doesn't have to be anything special. You can use a USB 2. You can probably use a USB 1, but I wouldn't recommend it because they're so slow. Um, these devices... Uh, our, our, the PNYs are nice, uh, or rather the 32 megabyte is nice because we actually have expanded USB persistence file capacity in this version, and this stick's big enough to handle it. So go ahead and slap it in. Now we're obviously we're starting with MX Linux. This is my MX my MX box, and we're going to use the usual live USB tool. Now if you don't have MX Linux installed, don't worry. If you've made a USB stick with MX Linux or Antix for that matter, and you, you can as long as you have two USB sticks, you can do this from the live system. What we're going to do exactly the way we're going to do it. So if you don't have this system, if you if you don't have MX already installed or you don't have Antix already installed, you can do it from the live USB stick. It just means you need two two sticks. You need one to boot the live system and one as your target USB stick. Okay, so in my menu down here, open up the menu and just type uh yeah that's it just yeah okay. and then uh, live USB maker. So just type the live. It'll come right up. Okay, right there. Yep. And Live USB Maker is going to let us. It's going to show us a couple of things. The top option is what device we're using. I only have one device installed, so it's only going to show the one. Uh, then we're going to select the ISO. So let's go ahead and select the ISO. Click on that. And I already have one that I conveniently set up for you, so you don't have to navigate my folders. Just go up to the Recent tab up there. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah, there gotcha. you go. And you want the MX17 X64 ISO. And then there's an open button down at the bottom where you can just hit Enter. And there we go. So now we have our target USB. We've got our ISO. What do you think now? I don't know. I'm a little nervous. A little nervous? Well, all you can do is hit the button and pray. Okay. So, no, no, it just went off. You just, uh, I think you okay. changed desktops, actually. Let me see here. Yeah, I think you changed desktops. Okay. For a second. Let me just put everything back. We'll edit that out. I don't use Linux. <laughs> this is my first time. Yeah, but what we don't know, you notice the stick's pink. This is hers. I have a matching blue one. So, uh, uh, you know, it's just kind of silly between us oracles. Um, all right, so all you can do is hit the button and go. So okay. hit apply. Now I'm afraid to hit any buttons. Things are going to go All away. right, so okay. what's happening here now is going to look very busy, but what it's doing is taking, it's going to make our partition set up on the USB stick automatically. You don't have to do anything. It will wipe whatever's on the stick before, but it's going to make it so that you get the full featured live USB stick. So you can basically do anything you could do on a regular installed system from the USB stick, which is nice for Mrs. Oracle because she's going to be doing this on what she uses for her schoolwork, and she doesn't want to necessarily nuke Windows off of there because, you know, software, uh, proprietary software that the school uses. So here it goes. This is usually pretty boring, so I usually just talk through it, and then I fast forward it because people can't hear me. They you should can tell see me a my joke. They should they see my lips moving, but they can't hear me. You should tell me a joke. I should tell you a joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? What you crying for? Mm. I might leave this in. I don't know. I've never had banter <laughs> on my show before. <laughs> I don't think that qualifies as banter. That's not that's, banter. That's not good. That is not good if it's banter. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice the progress bar <laughs> is advancing up here. The virtues of using USB three is that it makes the stick very quickly. This will take about two and a half minutes on a USB 2 device, and it's a, about one and a half on, a, on my USB 3 total process. So we're not really Kermit and Mayo, are we? We're not Kermit and Mayo. For you Brits out there, hopefully you know who that is. Hello to Jason Isaacs. Hello to Jason. Indeed and do. All right, so nice friendly message. Okay. Click OK. Now, the stick is created, so we're going to – we actually have to take the stick out of the slot – do I have to do you anything to, to remove it? Nope. Right now it's unmounted. It's, it's it already. It's yes. It's okay. safe to pull it out, and I'll give it like two seconds. One, two. Now put it back in. All right. So now we're going to start up. I've got a virtual box machine set up so that we can actually see what the first boot's going to look like. So let's see. Let's let me just pull that up here. Virtual box, and there we go. This in the new USB sticks added. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, there it is, start button. I oh, can't believe I couldn't find that. So I've switched it to scaled mode so we can see the text a little bit better. 
Let me just scroll this up a little bit. <clears throat> so what I get, this is the first boot of what you see when you first boot it up, uh, obviously. It'll look a little bit different depending if you're using a legacy BIOS. So here's a geek moment. A legacy BIOS setup, which is what a lot of older machines use, or a UEFI setup, which is a lot of newer machines use, which actually this isn't going to be what your first boot menu looks like because you use the UEFI okay. setup on your Yoga. Um, yes, it's a Lenovo Yoga, and yes, MX Linux will not brick it, unlike Ubuntu 17.10. Oh, short little jab there at Ubuntu, but they'll get that fixed. All right, so we have certain modes here, but what we're more mostly interested in are the boot menus. You'll see across the bottom you have F1, F2, F3. These exist in a kind of tiered menu on the UF on the UEFI boot, but on this one you can select them both. So if your English, if your language is in English, whoops, there we go. Now I hit F2. F2, you can choose a different language. You can see we actually have the languages in the alternate language. So escape backs out of any menu here. Mouse doesn't work on this screen. Um, mm -hmm. okay. So F3 gives us our time zones. So we can choose any time zone we want. Auto will give you actually give you the default time zone, which I believe is New York uh, in the US. Um, but you can pick a different time zone and a different language, and that will set up your keyboard and everything before you ever boot into the desktop which is actually what we want you to do because uh, XFCE does some odd things with keyboard setups. Um, all right, so back out of this, hit F4, and we'll show them the options. Do I have to back out, or can I just uh, hit F4? You know what, good question. Hit it. Who knows? You're not going to break anything. Okay. No. Just hit Escape, okay. and then F4. F4, I'm going. this is some d new options here that we inherited from the Annex project. Uh, most of this is, is, is old stuff from before. From equals USB is what I'm going to use to boot the live USB inside the virtual box. It's kind of a trick if you have an ISO file and a USB stick that match. You can you can start the boot from the from VirtualBox won't boot a USB. Okay. So you can start the boot from the disk the image and then hand it off to the USB stick. And it's the same, it's more or less the same as if you started from the USB stick. So it's good for videos. Okay. Alright, so but these guys down here are the new stuff. Con with, which means console with. So it's that scrolling boot text you see when MX starts up. If you can adjust how many columns you want your console okay. to have, and that makes the the text smaller or bigger. Okay. It, it, play with it. I you leave mine the default. I don't mess with it, but I, I like the size the way it is. So we're going to set that. But the real meat and potatoes of what we're looking for is the F5 persistence menu. So hit the F5. So with persistence, these are the same persistence options that we standardized on back during the MX15 antics, 15, 16 days. Persist all is going to give you persistence files both with programs and apps in the root file system and in a separate and it'll make a separate one for your home folder. So things like your documents, settings and things, that all reside in a separate file. There's actually some some nice things that happen when you do that uh, from a from, from from a management point of view. But you can set it up so that persist root only makes a root file system and persist home only makes the home folder. So if you want you know, a lot of people do this for banking. Like they'll set up a, a, a home folder that has their stuff in it, but they don't want anything else on the system to be able to change. So the rest of the file system is read only. Okay. So that all changes. So they'll, they'll they'll do it. They'll go online. They'll do their banking. They'll turn it off, and it's all wiped because it's all read only. Nothing can be saved. What's the persist static? Persist static is just like persist all, except persist all loads those the the root file system changes the anything that's stored in the persistence file into RAM. So it's very, very fast if you have the RAM to handle it. Um, Persist Static doesn't throw all that stuff into RAM. It leaves it on the USB stick. I actually, I, for me, it, yes, in RAM is faster, and I've got the RAM to do it. I prefer the static, especially off a USB 3 device, because USB 3 is pretty darn fast. It's fast. If you've got a spinning hard drive, it's probably faster than a spinning hard drive. Uh, anyway. Which so, one would I probably choose, the Persist All? Persist static, you could do on your laptop. You could go either way. You have you actually have more RAM on your laptop than I do on mine, uh, so that would be fine to do okay. that. Uh, static is a little more robust. If you have a power failure or something, all the information is already saved in the static file. Mm -hmm. On persist all, it actually has to be saved when you log out. Okay. So if power fails or something like that, then it's fast, but you, it, it, the sync it has to happen after right. afterwards. Uh, I very rarely had problems with the with the persist all option. I almost never have problems with persist static. Okay. So with my videos, I always use persist static because the, the world is weird when you're recording. Uh, and the frugal options are the same, except they put 
instead of using a USB stick, it put, actually it makes an installation file on your hard drive. Okay. You still need the stick to boot to it, but all the stuff is actually stored on your hard drive. So it can access it faster? Uh, yeah, especially if it's a USB 2.2 uh, two device, it would be faster. It's okay. not necessary. Or if you have an SSD, for, for instance, like you do in your, in your Lenovo, right. it would be faster off of that. Um, if all you got is a Windows partition, I don't, I don't know how much I feel about recommending that because Windows does weird things with, the, with its partitions when, right. it, when, it, when it updates. So sometimes they lock. So I'm not sure how that would affect a frugal boot. But, uh, but it, it, the option's there. A lot of people use it, and they have good luck with it, especially on the Annex side. We see the Annex guys making frugal installs all the time. Okay. So, so we're going to do Persist Static. So let's hit okay. Persist Static. And then we just got to select our, our boot option there. Just the, yeah, one. just hit enter, but it's the arrows go, go make the thing go up and down. Okay. So we're going to boot, and this is what the text looks like. And again, we're scale, so this is going to be a little large from, from what you would notice seeing. But you see it's asking us if we want to create a root FS file system. Now, this is the, the part that's going to store all our apps that we might install, things like that. So I want that. You want that. That's what, that's right. what we're doing. And we can, but before we hit the automatic, you see it's offering to make a four gigabyte one, which is pretty good size. Um, if we hit the two for custom instead of one for automatic, uh huh, it will see that it will actually let us make a file up to 20 gigabytes. 20 gigabytes is god awful large for a persistence file. But, you know, if you've got a 128 gigabyte stick or something like mm -hmm. that, I've got one of those laying around, although it gets insanely hot, so I try not to use it. Um, it, it, it tends to like the one other computer. It does okay in that one. And in, in my ThinkPad, it gets so hot, I, I'm scared to use it. But uh, uh, you can anyway. You can put 20 gigabytes in there. If you got the room on the stick, you know, give it a try. You can put a whole bunch of stuff in there. This is great for updates because updates, especially when Debian updates, mm -hmm. they can drop a gigabyte of updates on you in a hurry. Um, this is great for that. And you can use the remaster system later to take all that stuff in that file, cram it back into the to the main. Linux file system, and then get a fresh persistence file. I've got a different video on that. Check it out. All, the, all this stuff I'm doing right now pertains to Antics 17 as well, and the Antics videos pertain to this, except for the increased sizes. The Antics 17 stuff still defaults, still maxes out to 6 gigabytes, I think, but that all that stuff's changing. We just kind of got it in MX because Antics was still in, still developing some new stuff. All right, so let's do um, let's do it. Let's do a let's do a 12 gigabyte file. Okay. Why not? So you can see, yeah, right, you just pop in the number, and now it's already made it. It's, it was very, oh, it's very, very okay. fast. Uh, it's very, very fast when you oh, use our system. So now it's creating the home persistence file. This is like having that separate home folder. And I would just use the default size for this because okay. it doesn't really, uh, it does, you don't actually put all that much stuff in there. And it goes through, and it says, oh, danger! Well, danger is kind of a misnomer, but we do, since we have persistence files, and you're probably going to have your own data on this stick, we want to have your own password. So just type in something you can remember for a password. You'll need this password whenever you install apps or anything like that. It's the administrator password. And now you need a password for the demo account, which the demo account is what's on the live USB by default, and this will be your regular user account. Can this be the same password? It can. But a lot of people shouldn't. don't like that, but if this is a single user system, uh, there's really no harm in it. Um, the only th the only harm is if somebody guesses your your regular account password, they got them both. But and are there any limits on how many characters it needs to be, or minimum number of characters? Uh, I believe there's technically a minimum of two okay. with the system. Uh, uh, obviously, the more characters, the 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 the, the better. Um, okay, so we typed all that in. It's continuing. The bit. You don't have to do anything with an application beforehand to create your persistence files. It just does it. And it just does, and that's done. We're going to have it. We've got it right out of the gate. And that's how easy it is to create the, the, the USB with persistence. Now, we've made this stick on my production system. Let me go full screen here. Well, I have to go through all of that when I put it into my machine. No. Okay. When you go on your own machine, um, it's already set that's up. already set up okay. and it will look for your own hardware it doesn't remember my hardware it looks for your own it actually does remember my hardware but it knows the difference between my computer and yours okay if I am using this on my yoga and then I put it into my school Mac would it work on my school Mac if it, it will boot on the Mac it will work on the Mac okay. some Macs that we, we were having success with booting on Macs your school Mac is probably old enough it'll work okay and actually, that's actually great because it's, the live USB system in the Antics world and, and, and MX by extension is so good, 
I don't even know why you'd bother trying to install on a Mac. I just plop the USB stick in. Macs are a pain in the butt uh, for dual booting. So, that, so you still have your Mac? And hey, they're Unix. You know, love to Mac. I don't care. Uh, I like my Mac. <laughs> she doesn't like her Mac. <laughs> That's why we have the low yoga. Uh, two Macs at school. She still drags her yoga to school. All right. And and then we have the... Uh, uh, that would just be an easy way to dual boot is to set up the USB stick and not have to worry about it. So there you go. And this is what it first looks like when you boot up. And okay. you guys have seen my What's New video. So I don't know. Any questions on persistence before we sign off? No. All right. That makes sense to me. It makes sense to her, which is great because she doesn't use the Linux, folks. She's heard it here first. This is Mrs. Oracle trying, getting her own live USB set up for the first time. Hopefully we'll have her back after a while so she can tell us how it goes because we're going to put on video editing software. We're going to have OBS Studio. We're going to have all the stuff she uses for her flip classroom. Um, little little educator lingo there, just so you know. <laughs> uh, and then... You're so cute. Well, <laughs> And then we'll see how it go. How we'll see what she what she thinks about it afterwards. This is this is the best I can do for coming up with a, a someone who has not used Linux before trying it, who I can actually get onto camera uh, in a reasonable fashion. Also, she may be a <laughs> dolphin coaster, so you know, <laughs> gotta love that. Hey. All right, well, signing off for tips, tricks, and how tos. Head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forum.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle. And Mrs. Oracle. Signing off. Have a great day. That is a keeper. I sounded like a nut. <laughs>